Hi, welcome to my barn kitchen. Today I'm making apple maple jam from apples from my tree. I've been doing um, apple pie filling to where we're overloaded with pies. I don't know how we're going to eat all of them. I've made five gallons of apple wine. So now I'm going to try some jam. I did some jelly also. Quite frankly, I'm getting tired of apples and ready to be done with them. i got one, about one more bucket and they will be finished. Anyway, today's apple pie. Apple maple jam is made with Pomona's pectin. This is the low sugar version. I, I am kind of borderline pre-diabetic, so I'm trying to really watch the sugar. And by using this, you utilize the calcium water, which, which sets up your jam rather than pectin and loads of sugar. It works great. I haven't had any troubles with it, and it tastes wonderful. You're not overloaded with the sugar like you are in normal jam recipes, and so it works great for everything. First thing I got to do is get these apples peeled. It takes about eight cups. Um, again, I am using my apple peeler. I would not attempt this without it. You place the apple on the peeler with core first. Just simply spin it. It's going to peel, slice, and core all at the same time. Works really slick, like I said. I'd highly recommend if you don't have an apple peeler to invest in one. So then you simply pull it off of there. I usually break off any pieces, um, look for bad spots, and then I'm putting it into a gallon of water with a half a cup of lemon juice. This will keep it from discoloring until I get everything, all of them peeled and ready to put together in the recipe. So I'm going to go ahead and get these apples peeled. Okay, I've got all the apples peeled and in the pot, and as you can see, I've cut them into small pieces because we're making a jam here and not... not like slice like for pie so I've just taken the pie slices and quartered them up so that they're going to be chunks once they're cooked so I've got them on the stove now and to this I'm going to add eight tablespoons of lemon juice and we want to cook these until the apples just start to get tender I'm stirring them quite quite a bit so that they don't stick but then I'm going to add the rest of the ingredients once the apples start to get tender now one thing I did mention to you that I am using Pomona's pectin and to that you add her pectin powder to your sugar. I haven't stirred it in yet because I wanted you to see what it's like, but there's four teaspoons of Pomona's pectin to two cups of sugar. And you stir that all up with a whisk. You get that all mixed before you put it in your, your um, apples. You want that all blended well. And to that, I'm also going to add my spices. I have a teaspoon of cinnamon, a half a teaspoon of nutmeg, and then a fourth a teaspoon of cloves and a half a teaspoon of allspice. And all that's going to go into this sugar mixture before I add it to the apples. So I'm just going to go ahead and get that ready to go. Okay. That'll just sit there then until the apples have gotten crushed tender and we'll add it. The other component of Pomona's is the calcium water. What you do is you take a half a teaspoon of her packet of calcium, half a teaspoon, to a half a cup of water. And you keep this in your refrigerator, and you can use it for many, many different batches. You just shake it up before you use it, and then I have measured out. I want four teaspoons of the calcium water to go in with the apples and the lemon juice. So I've got that right here. I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. But you've got to make sure and not forget the calcium water because this is what sets everything up in lieu of having actual pectin. But there's the four teaspoons of calcium water. So again, we're just gonna stir this around and cook it for about 10 minutes till the apples start to get tender. And then I'll add the sugar with the spices. And then I'm also gonna be adding a cup of pure maple syrup, which is the apple maple jam. So I'm just gonna let that cook for a few minutes and then we'll get the rest of the ingredients in and I'll show you what it's gonna look like. Okay, we've had the apples on the stove now for about 10 minutes. They've reduced down a bit because they're getting cooked, have, have cooking them just with the lemon juice and with the calcium water. So now it's time to add the sugar and the maple syrup. So I'm gonna add one cup of pure maple, maple syrup and this is not pancake syrup, this is pure maple syrup. And then I'm gonna add the sugar that's got the spices mixed in with the Pomona's pectin. So I'm going to stir that up really good and get that boiling and hot again and it will be ready to can here in just about five, ten minutes. Um, I do have my canner 
heating up and getting ready. Also got my lids on the stove heating up and getting ready. As I've said in the past about panning, everything's got to be synchronized so that your timing is such that your recipe is ready to go in the jars when they have finished completing in the dishwasher. I took up or process all my jars in the dishwasher. Have done this way many years and it works great for me. So you just gotta make sure everything is synchronized. So I'm gonna keep stirring that. It's not gonna take very long at all. It's already starting to thicken. And the key is keep stirring it here. You don't want it to stick on you or get burnt. But I can hear the timer over there. My jars are ready. So I need to get them out, get this stuff bottled up and, and jarred and ready to process. So there's where we're at right now. Okay, we're going to get out the okay, jars. So we've got the apples done. The jars are out of the dishwasher. They're hot and ready to fill. So let's get going. And to recap, while I'm filling these jars, you peel your apples, core them, slice them, cut them into cubes, keep them in lemon water until you're done so they don't discolor. And at the same time, you're getting your canner ready, your lids ready, you've got your um, bands out ready to go. But then you take your um, apples plus lemon juice plus calcium water and bring that to a soft boil and get the apples tender that cooks for about 10 minutes. Then you're going to add your two cups of sugar with your spices and your Pomona's pectin and, and blend it in with your apples. You re return to a boil and then you want to boil hard for two minutes. This really dissolves that sugar and gets everything nicely cooked. So I'm filling the jars. A couple of these looks like I got too full. I'm going to have to take some out. You want to bring it to about a quarter of an inch from the top. These have got nice big chunks of apples in it. It's more like apple pie in a jar, quite frankly. So this one's got too many. I'm going to do a little transfer in here. Use a spoon to get the rest of it. And the juice settles down around that. The one thing with Pomona's that I want to point out is it thickens as it cools. So you may kind of freak out thinking, oh, my, jar, my jelly's not getting thick or my jam. And it will as it cools. So then... Get, get your jars done and, and finish them one at a time. You're going to take a clean rag, wipe the rim so, you, so nothing's on the tip of the rim. Keep that lid from sticking. Get a, a lid out of your jar, put that down, put a ring on it, and hand tighten only. Don't get crazy with this, and then put it in the canner. So we're going to do the rest of these. We process them for 10 minutes in the water bath canner. And I will show you the end result here. We'll get these filled up and put them in the processor and go over the next step. Again, wipe them, put a ring on them from your boiling water sitting over here, a rim, and hand tighten. And the jars are hot. You want to work very thick quickly before they all start cooling. Okay, I've got all the jars filled and capped and in the can are ready to go down in the water. I ended up with two, four, six, eight, ten half pints and one pint. So, made a pretty, pretty good little, little uh, batch. So you're going to gently enter, drop them down into the water, in the boiling water, and you want to make sure that there's at least one inch of water over the top of the jars. The way that I, do, I check this is I take a wooden spoon, stick it in, and I have got a good inch, inch and a half. So then what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the lid on it, I'm going to turn up the heat, and I'm going to wait for it to hit a full rolling boil, and then it's going to boil for 10 minutes. At that time, I'll turn off the fire, get them out, and we'll show you what they look like. Okay, it's been 10 minutes, so I want to get these out, remove this lid, and you can see it's a full rolling boil, and it has been that way for 10 minutes, so I'm going to turn the fire off and lift these out. And you need to be very careful because it's very, very hot. And you just spring them out and hook your rack up over the sides of the pan and let them stay that way. And it's recommended that you leave them set there, wait, set there for about five minutes. One of the things that I was thinking about, I was going over this video, I'm afraid I might have been a little bit confusing when I was talking about the pectin. 
I use Pomona's Pectin, and I love this stuff. And by the way, I do not work for them. I'm not receiving any kind of gratuities for this. But I wanted to explain it a little bit more. When you get Pomona's Pectin, you open up the package, and there's two, two boxes inside. We have a small skinny one, that's your calcium powder. And then the other one is actually your, your pectin from Pomona's. And it is pectin, but it's 100% citrus based. So it, it's used for recipes for low sugar. And we could all cut down on our sugar. So that's, you take the calcium water and you take a half a teaspoon to a half a cup of water, mix it up in a small jar and keep it in your refrigerator, as I said. So then it's ready to go when you need to make your jams. But there's a handy little guide in the box. It gives you recipes for different jams and jellies. But the thing that I really like about it, and I use most oftenly, is she has a conversion um, chart in here for developing your own recipes. You can take a standard strawberry jam or, or anything like that that's got tons and tons of sugar and convert it to a Pomona's low sugar recipe. So I just wanted to clarify that. It's wonderful. It is kind of hard to find. I buy it online. I can't find it locally, but it's worth the effort to get it. So I think it's probably been close to five minutes, close enough, whatever. I'm going to go ahead and get these out. I use my pot, pot lifter, and you just want to lift them out and set them on a towel to cool. That big one's mine, by the way left over so we put it in a little bigger jar. So these are going to sit on a towel now and let go undisturbed for 24 hours. At the end of 24 hours I'm going to come wipe them down, check the seals, take the, take the rings loose, check the seals, and then um, date them. That's real important. And take them up to the house and put in the pantry. These make wonderful Christmas gifts. Um, people love to get homemade treats. In addition to using it just for um, toast or biscuits, you can also use this as a marinade or in pork. It's really good, but it's kind of like apple pie in a jar. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I will be posting this on Facebook, and I have my own YouTube channel now. It's called Barn Kitchen Basics. Would love to see have you join me there. And until next time, happy canning. And here is a shot, last but not least, the finished product cooling until tomorrow. Thank you.